Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar. So getting started with structure on cloud, speed and power mode. So in this webinar, we are going to focus on using our new speed mode and power mode and some best practices and other tips for effectively leveraging structure um, at your organization. And with that, let's get started. So I'm Connor, a learning and onboarding specialist uh, here at Tempo. I work on learning initiatives at Tempo. My main focus today is to maximize the value that you get out of this learning session. So any feedback or suggestions uh, are welcome. Our main presenter on the call today is one of our best structured product experts, uh, Alexander. So Alex will be leading the demo as well as talking through the structure roadmap. Uh, you will hear from Alex in a couple minutes. We also have our structure cloud product manager, Constantin, on the call. Um, so he'll be answering all your questions in the question box. All right, so for our topics today, uh, there will be a demo in which Alex will introduce speed mode and then talk about speed mode versus power mode. Look at some best practices for creating your first structure. Some tips for getting some clearer visibility into your projects. And then, like I said, he's going to talk about what's on the roadmap. And then we will end with some Q&A. All right. So before we, uh, or before I should say, pass it over to Alex, let's just introduce Structure by Tempo to those of you that are new to it. And it can be a quick review for all of you experienced Structure users on the call. So Structure is the most flexible project and program management solution for JIRA. As you will see soon, Structure gives teams a lot of power. So really unlimited ways to manage issues, track progress, and report on work across multiple projects, product lines, and initiatives. It also enables management, giving them easy access to real-time portfolio overviews. And one way in which it's very flexible, teams can actually stick to their preferred methodology, so such as agile, waterfall, or a hybrid. So that's just a quick introduction to the value structure can bring to your organization. I'm going to throw it over to Alex now to talk a bit more about speed and power mode and then show you structure in action. So I'll give it to you, Alex. All right. Uh, thank you, Connor. Uh, it looks like we have a lot of powerful structure users here. Uh, I hope we find something new for, for everyone. I'm going to start with uh, general introduction to what speed mode is so it's it is the feature um, that we implemented uh some time ago uh, on the cloud um and the idea behind that was that we um we create a more easy way to create a structure for for new users to increase the adoption um we we know that uh learning curve to to work with structure is, is a bit steep and we understand that uh you need to uh get the knowledge and get the logic of, of the generators of how everything is organized how everything is connected um and sometimes it slows down the um the adoption uh, among different teams uh so Sometimes it's only one person on the team who uh, spend time and learns all the features and how to build the structures. Um, so we want to, to make it easy and we introduce that uh, new mode to build everything. We call it speed mode. Um, it's kind of different uh, from the power mode. So the power mode is the usual way to build all the hierarchies that we used to see before with the generators. Um, it's uh, kind of utilized the, the different approach, which we uh, will see. Um, so, okay, let's let's go and uh, look at the, the examples. So this is the structure, uh, it's empty structure. I'm gonna start from, from the beginning. Um, I'm gonna show how you build a simple hierarchy using the, um, the power mode, the, the, uh, the standard mode we all used to work with. And then I built the same uh, with the speed mode, and you can see the difference between two approaches. So I'm going to go and create a new structure. And you see it now suggests you two options. So I'm going to go in the power mode, call it power mode. So 
you probably know that already, but I, I quickly go uh, through the steps. So the power mode uh, utilizes uh, the generators to, to build structure, to build the hierarchies, to populate the data. Um, there is a way to build manual structures, but when, we're not talking about that in um, uh, current presentation. So the generators, those are rules that uh, take the Jira data based on the specific condition and show you uh, the information in the hierarchical view. And the logic behind that is that you, you think over the different levels of your hierarchy. So you start from the base level, you start from the first level, and this is what the insert generator adds. And uh, this is base level from which you then go um, further with your hierarchy. You can build it um, um, top down. You can add the additional sub items to your uh, current base level and then sub items to those sub items. So it's the standard top down approach, which is mostly used. And one of the uh, biggest example is uh, portfolio view on your products. Um, but you can go the other direction. You can go bottom up, uh, adding additional levels on top of your existing levels. Um, so I'm going to show this real simple example uh, consisting of epic story subtask, which is top down. So I'm going to use as the base level is the first level epics from the particular project. Each generator provides several options how I want to uh, add the information. So in the insert generator, I'm going to use the basic inserter, which provides the uh, simple select list. So I'm going to go for um, a couple of projects I have in my Jira instance. And I'm going to select the epic issue type. So that brings me uh, the epics from those two projects. And this is my uh, first level. From that, I'm going to go down. I'm going to uh, add sub items. So I need to add another generator. In this case, it's the extend generator. I'm extending the current level with, uh, with its sub children. And uh, again, generators have multiple options. In this case, uh, depending on what kind of relationship we have between different issues in the JIRA, and JIRA provides multiple ways to connect issues, I'm going to select the specific uh, connection because I'm building Epic connected with the story, which is standard uh, connection between Epic story, Epic tasks. I'm going to use issues under Epics. But if you have something different, like you connect items with issue links, you build your connection in the advanced roadmaps, um, you're going to choose the different option. So I'm adding the stories. That populates the stories. And I'm going to go again. And I'm adding the subtasks. So these are the steps to build this simple hierarchy. Um, I need to add the first level with the generator. And then I need to populate the different levels with other generators. So that's the logic behind uh, the, the power more the, the standard mode of the structure. Now let's see how the same hierarchy can be built with the speed mode. So I'm going to go again and create a new structure. And this time, I'm selecting the speed mode. Uh, so the uh, general difference, the main difference between these two modes is how we approach into the logic of the uh, hierarchy. I already mentioned that. In the power mode, you, you think over the different levels. You need to think about your base level, and then you need uh, to understand uh, where you're adding your additional levels from, from the bottom of the hierarchy on the top of the hierarchy. In the speed mode, uh, you start thinking from, from the scope. You first uh, need to understand what kind of scope I want to add for my hierarchy. And this is going to be the global scope. So I'm selecting the project. Again, I'm going to select the same project. Uh, and this will be my whole scope for uh, the whole hierarchy. And I'm, I'm going to explain this concept a little bit uh, later. Then we need to decide what kind of um, hierarchy, what kind of levels we're going to add from that scope. So uh, I already have some populated um, lines, but let's pretend that Nothing has been added. So on the first level, I'm going to see, I'm going to have my epics. Um, I'm going to change it, of course, but we're going to build the same hierarchy. So I have, I have first level with epics. And from this wizard, from this view, I'm going to define the uh, other levels of my hierarchy. 
So epics on the first, then stories on the second level, and then subtasks on the third level. So that's all. I'm gonna name it like this. So if I split the screen and I'm gonna add the power mode over here, extend it. Um, so it should give me absolutely the same result, or almost absolutely. And again, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. And you can notice that how uh, simpler it from uh, from the general approach to building in speed mode. So I just need to define the scope. I need to define uh, the different levels um, and which issue goes on which level. So that's that was our thinking about how we can simplify uh, the the way to build your your first structures or your simple structures, um, and we hope that that will help uh, everyone to adopt it much more easier. Um, the thing about the scope. So I mentioned that um, when we are in the speed mode, we define in the, uh, the general uh, scope from, from, from the beginning. Um, and the logic is that we separate the scope in hierarchy. So in the power mode, when we have the generators, each generator adds uh, the hierarchical positioning, like extend, adds the levels, uh, second level, third level, but it also adds the scope. So that means if I have uh, epics from a particular project on the first level, the generators, like extend generators, can add uh, the stories from the same project, but they can also add the stories from different projects that, that uh, have been linked to that epic. And examples here, you can see that I have this TDI project which is not selected uh, on the scope of my insert generator, on my main scope. And this is exactly because extend is also uh, adds the scope. So it, it works in, in two dimensions. It adds the hierarchy and it adds the scope. In the speed mode, it's, uh, it's scope based. So when I selected the project on the top, it already defines the scope I have. So it would only add the item uh, that belong to do these two particular projects. And you can notice that um, here uh, under that epic, oops, sorry. Under that particular epic, I don't have the um, TTI uh, story because it doesn't belong to this scope I, I have defined at the beginning. Um, and that actually helps us when we work in a particular Jira projects uh, and we don't want to see the items that belong to different projects or uh, different teams, for example. So we're only concentrating on the work that belongs to us through these projects. And we define that scope uh, in the speed mode and uh, we see that these are, uh, items directly in, in this scope. Um, so if we have uh, build the same hierarchy, if we wanted to build the same hierarchy through the generators, through the power mode, we would probably need to define uh, this scope for the filter. So we'd need to filter out uh, with additional query uh, this uh, this particular scope. So I would say something, uh, filter out the all the issues from our projects that not projects this Gantt yeah, structure. And speed mode does that automatically. OK, so this wizard uh, this menu for building hierarchy. Um, it also allows to, to make it more complex, of course. So it's not only for building simple hierarchies. We can add additional uh, levels of information. We can slice and dice our hierarchy to, to be more suitable for our cases. Um, and it's pretty much the same options we have um, on the power mode view when we can add groupings, we can add filterings. So for example, um, I can add on top of the epics uh, grouped by a particular field. So let's say epics are done by teams. So I can group by uh, my teams field. And my stories are done by individual team members. So I can group it by signees. Uh, I can do it from the beginning. I can do it um, 
any time uh, within my work. So it's just changed the view I already have here. And if I click apply, it should change the hierarchy any second now. OK, so you can see that uh, I have groupings by the team um, on the epic level and groupings by Asanya on, on the individual level. Same thing in the power mode would need to add the group generator um, and specify on which level I am applying this uh, group generator. So I would have um, a group by team, or teams field uh, on the first level. And then I would add the group by assignees um, on the second level for, for the stories. So pretty much the same, but uh, applied slightly differently. OK, um, so again, this is quite a simple example uh, just to show you uh, the, the idea of, of that functionality. Of course, speed mode can be used for much more complex cases. Uh, you can build much more complex hierarchies. Uh, as I mentioned, you can apply uh, the same logic with the filtering, with the grouping. So on each individual levels, I can apply uh, a separate filter. So let's say um, on the story level, I don't want to see uh, the stories that are completed. So I can say um, the status uh, in analyzing backlog uh, so anything that now is completed, or oh, I can go into the GQL and say something like uh, status not in done, for example. So that would apply this filter particularly for this fourth level for the story level, and it will um, it will change the view only for these uh, items. The other options that uh, Power Mode provides, like uh, the quick filtering. Um, is absolutely the same. So you can build the hierarchy with the speed mode and then um, applying the quick filters to uh, to cut the view for, for, for the particular uh, purpose, to, to focus on the particular tasks. Um, and it, it's similarly how it works. In power mode, it changed the view for, uh, for the speed mode. So you can work the same. And uh, the same principle applies to sharing the structure. So I can share the structure uh, built in speed mode. Uh, the same way I can share it with, uh, I can share the structure built in the power mode with uh, anyone in my company uh, on, on my team. And same applies to the columns. Uh, all the columns available uh, in the power mode, available in the speed mode. So it's absolutely the same. We can add uh, any type of the information that has um, created in the JIRA, information that can create, be created uh, in a structure directly. So you can uh, slice and dice uh, whatever amount of information you have in JIRA and create the view specifically for you. It's just, it uh, provides you a slightly easier way to, to approach uh, to the hierarchies at the beginning. Okay, so let's uh, look at the other examples. So I'm gonna just clear this view and um, I'm going to go for the other projects. So I, I'm going to clear this project selection. And I'm going to go for the Spring Planet project. Um, I'm going to go for the stories because I have stories over there. And I'm going to also, um, I'm going to also group it by Sprint. Like this, and clear the selection. So it easily builds uh, the view for uh, sprint management, and I can apply the sprint management view of the columns, and I can un uh, easily operate with, uh, with with that view. So much more easier when to do with the generators, uh, but we need to uh, to understand that uh, if if you approach the same uh, hierarchy, it's slightly different logic, especially with the scope. So we need to be aware of the scope because if sometimes uh, you don't see the items that you want to see that you know that exist in, in this particular um, scope, that probably because this scope is not uh, on this uh, general uh, project scope. OK. 
k. So that's pretty much pretty much it. Uh, it covers the, the general uh, the basics uh, of the of the speed mode. Um, so we hope that it it will give more uh, ability to to get into the structure to get the value of the product from the beginning uh, without uh, trying and, and mixing the generators and not probably understanding at the beginning how it works. Um, but yeah, both options are always available. And uh, if you're used to work with the generators, probably there's no need to go into the speed mode. You can continue work with the generators and get the same value. Um, if you're at the beginning, you can try the speed mode. You can see if it works or if it doesn't work. And compare to, to ways of building the, uh, the hierarchies, the scopes, and see which one works best for you. The other things that we wanted to share with you today is uh, our roadmaps. So something that is uh, going to be released soon, maybe not so soon. Um, and uh, in this particular uh, presentation, I'm going to share the roadmap for the Structure Cloud and Structure DC. Um, if you are interested in other products like Gand, uh, or Table Data Sheets, Table Planner, uh, you probably need to uh, reach out to us directly because it's not part of this scope. Um, so for the cloud, for the structure cloud, uh, the next upcoming things are um, text wrapping. Uh, so this uh, couple of features that come in next are part of feature parity. Uh, so if you're if you've been using the server or DC version of the structure, you've probably seen that already. Um, so the text wrapping existing on the server DC, it's going to be added to uh, the cloud as well. So it allows you to um, to increase the uh, uh, the height of the uh, of the row of the structure, so it's more likely, um, like in the Excel, with the uh, more information in each column, and that allows you to put more data and see the more data in structure boards at, at one place. Uh, same for the quick group transformation. So if you used to work with the server version, you know that um, it also has, apart from the quick filters, it, ha it has other options um, to change the view individually. So we can not only apply the filters, we can apply the groupers, we can apply um, the extenders. So the uh, this quick group transformation is part of that feature parity, and we'll be able to group uh, by on the uh, on the individual transformation. So it would only change the view for individual users, and other people working with the same structure would not see the change unless uh, they have the shared structure with them. Structure fields or nodes column is also something that. Uh, has come from, from the DC version, from the server version. Uh, this is the column that allows us to, um, to add the uh, information in the structure directly. So it's not the Jira information, it's not the Jira field. It's something that we can, can type in uh, into the structure, uh, like, like nodes or any other information you need for your planning. So it, it, uh, it, it is safe inside the structure and it, it kept inside the structure. Uh, the formal functionality, this is a uh, quite big thing, and we actually are going to add additional webinar dedicated to uh, new functionality in the formulas. Um, it is also something that already exists in uh, in the server and on the DC, um, and recently added into the formula, uh, sorry, into the cloud formulas. Ability to see the issue links, ability to see the comments, uh, ability to work with work logs. So there is a lot of new stuff that hugely increase the functionality and uh, amount of insights we can build on uh, on the formal side. So please uh, join us to the next webinar. We're probably uh, uh, going to talk about it uh, in upcoming month. So uh, look for the, uh, for the advertisements. And integration with Roadmap. Um, so roadmap is a part of the Tempo product. It's not the Atlassian ecosystem. Uh, it's the tool to build roadmaps, um, but it can be connected to the Jira. Now it can be connected to the structure uh, as well. So this is the part of our uh, actual strategy uh, we have uh, with our products. So we build them uh, 
strategic portfolio management tool and integration of the roadmap is one of the steps there. So it would allow us to build the road uh, roadmaps uh, in, in this product, in this uh, in roadmap. And then from that product, from the roadmap, we'll be able to create uh, issues in the structure. So roadmap is more like a strategic tool where our C-levels plan their work for the future. And from that plan, so we can create a structure and work on the execution level, on the operational level, uh, create the progress, uh, track the progress, sorry. Um, and then we can aggregate these values back uh, into the roadmap, into on, on the roadmaps, and see how our plans correspond to our execution. And we can do that back and forth uh, iteratively and, and see how our work is progressing over the time. Um, the data center and server updates. On the data center, uh, because it's uh, already a mature project and its features are slightly different from the one uh, we have in the cloud. Um, so the things we're working right now is adding the planning tasks, which is kind of uh, be uh, send mocks for the structure. So you know the structure is always live. Structure allows to constantly change the data when you work on this data in the structure. So changes in the structure immediately propagated to the um, to the JIRA. It, it is not sometimes convenient when you want to plan for the future. So we don't want to create the JIRA issues. So that mode would allow you to uh, create uh, just these structure items. And you can plan on that. You can uh, uh, add the resources. You can see if it corresponds to your plans. And then you can convert those uh, planning tasks into the real JIRA issues and add those into the JIRA. Um, the scheduled effectors or export to Excel. This is the uh, ability to run the effectors on schedule effectors. If you don't know that, if it, it is ability to copy structured data back uh, to the JIRA. So if you have structured attributes, something calculated with the formulas, or um, for example, GAN, if you have GAN and you have GAN dates, um, those internal attributes, something that still exists in the structure, it, it doesn't exist uh, on, the, on, on the JIRA side. And these effectors allow to take that data and copy the JIRA fields. Currently on the server, you have to run it manually uh, because there's some technical limitation for that. Um, but you can run those effectors using separate tools like script runner, uh, on the schedule, so we add the ability to run those effectors or export to Excel uh, on the schedule within the structure with the structure uh, capabilities. And since I'm talking about the effectors, um, on the cloud, uh, it is not currently available, but we are working to add that as well. Uh, and uh, we hope it's going to be added uh, pretty soon. So cloud users will also have the ability to copy structure attributes, calculate the formula or GAN or aggregated values calculated in the structure back to the JIRA. Ability to rename groups, it's one of the features that had been asked uh, recently. So when you have items grouped in the structure, and uh, let's say for the assignee, and if there is no value, no assignee, uh, these items will fall under the group uh, with no value. So we would like to provide the ability to regroup those like uh, we can call it no assignee or wherever is suited for you. Uh, that that else that gives uh, more flexibility and more visibility on what's going on and what's that no value group means for for everyone. A couple of integrations. So I, I mentioned that we're working on uh, creating this soft uh, strategic portfolio management solution that includes integration between different Tempo products. Uh, and integration with Tempo Planner is, is one of those. So Cloud, Structure Cloud is already integrated with um, Tempo Planner. So we can add the uh, Tempo Plan time, uh, also Tempo Time Sheets as the column in the structure and see the plan time over the issues. Uh, same functionality will be added um, to the server version as well. So currently there is on the time sheets available on the server. So plan time is also going to be uh, there soon. And uh, our uh, latest addition to the Tempo family custom charts uh, will also be integrated uh, with the structure. Uh, we start from the server version. So that this is also something that is has been hugely 
missed and uh, asked a lot to be able to build uh, different charts, different visualization based on the structure calculations and custom charts exactly what will add that capabilities. So we'll be able to calculate values in the structure based on the different structures hierarchies and then use that data uh, to build the custom charts for different, different types of the charts. And same uh, as the, with the effectors, uh, this will be added uh, to the cloud eventually. So structure cloud users will also uh, will be able to build the uh, beautiful visualization of their processes based on the structure calculations. All right, uh, that's our new things that uh, come next. That, that's not all the things. Uh, we have other small items. We also have items we're working on, but we cannot yet commit to the particular date or particular quarter. Uh, you can check the, the roadmap, we have public roadmap right now and see which new features are coming next. And among those, there are other things we are working. And so look at our uh, emails. We usually send what's what's coming next uh, and probably going to be uh, surprised with some new features we have in plan. Um, right, so that's all I wanted to share with you. Uh, Connor, you're probably going to uh, take from here. I can take it from here. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Alex. If you just want to go to the next slide, oh, we're already there. Never mind. <laughs> uh, so, uh, enlightening demo and explanation of the uh, uh, you know, speed and power mode, and then everything that's happening um, with the uh, 2023 structure roadmap. Thank you so much for that. So, uh, where to go next? So, there are some helpful links for you to check out if interested, um, such as from. The Help Center, plenty of articles there to get you um, going, as well as a link to the Structure community on Slack. Um, there's plenty of great videos that can uh, definitely be of some use to you as well. And a uh, big announcement, we have another Structure webinar coming up. So on October 12th, there will be a webinar all about using formulas to unleash your data in Structure Cloud. So uh, it will be quite a focused session on using formulas in structure, uh, but we'll have, we'll have information for everyone to take away um, for sure. All right, let's uh, head over to the next slide there, Alex. Q&A, so we're getting lots of great questions in the, uh, in the question box and we can definitely answer some of those now. Um, one question that I would like to ask uh, or that I see is being asked is the, um, when it comes to hierarchy configuration um, in structure. So um, where, uh, where can the, uh, the user um, find that? Okay, uh, let me step back to, to my structure view. So, the main difference in the UI between the speed mode and the um, the power mode is that you see this modified structure uh, on the top instead of um, show the generators. So clicking on that will bring you the wizard for uh, for defining uh, all the hierarchical rules uh, in one place. So that's that's where you go to to change it to create it, um, and that's the main. The main source of information for the speed mode. So everything is here. So all the rules, all the uh, levels of hierarchy is managed in that view. Um, on the power mode, uh, click here, you can see the show generators and clicking on that uh, just shows the rules you are using and all the uh, logic, uh, all, the, all the rules that apply are managed from here directly. So you can double click on any of the generators and uh, change the scope and change the uh, settings inside those rules. Probably uh, the one thing uh, I also want to show um, is how to add. So I, I started with a simple example of the Epic Story subtask, and it's it's quite uh, often used. But uh, let's see if we have the other layers um, on top of the Epics. Um, let's say the initiatives or, or themes or programs. Um, structure uh, kind of agnostic uh, to the issue types, to the projects. So it, it actually doesn't matter for, for the structure what, what kind of uh, hierarchy is inside your Jira. We can build uh, any type of uh, view, any type of uh, level visualization. So it's not necessary to start with the Epic, of course. We can start from 
any issue type. So um, so we can go, okay, I'll actually go to speed mode. So we can go um, into the settings and as the as the first level we can define um, something higher than, than the epics. So in this case, um, I know that I have the, the initiatives in my uh, initiative project and it is connected to the different epics uh, in, in in my other projects, which is structure and okay, I think it's structure. So in this case, I'm going to start with um, initiative issue type, not the stories. So let's see what it does. It takes some time. It will bring initiatives and. On the next level, I will have to add the um, the items that below my initiatives. And in this case, it's epics. And I know that my epics connected to my initiatives through the uh, specific issue link that I created. And uh, it, it, it is called um, implement. And I need to find it over here. So it's implemented by because there are directions. And I'm going to choose the issue type, which is epic. So let's see if it works. OK, not all the uh, initiative has the epic. Okay, some, some of that has. Yes. Um, and then I can go and again create the next level. And in this case, it's going to be stories like that. So very simple. I can go uh, and build the hierarchy starting from some higher levels. Um, I can do the same in the power mode, but instead of using this wizard, I would start from the insert generator and put in the uh, the project for initiatives and the initiative itself. Then I'm going to extend uh, my initiatives with uh, epics uh, and then with the stories. Uh, and this is the top-down approach. And I already mentioned that, but you can go because we are flexible. We can go the other direction. So I can start from the epic and then group by initiatives they belong to. So there's, there's two different approaches, and it all depends on what kind of problem we want to solve. All right. Thanks, Alex. Do you have any other questions, Carl? Yeah, definitely. So uh, here's a good one. So is it possible to transfer a power mode structure into a speed mode structure? Hmm. Well, it's a great question. So the answer is no. Uh, currently, we cannot transform structure built in the speed mode into the structure built in the power mode. And the reason is, uh it's different ways to to build this hierarchy different uh different logic uh going on under the hood so currently no it's not possible to recreate in the power mode but probably we will we will think about it and if it is possible we will implement that in in the future okay another question here uh can you please explain how field column progress works I am not able to use status category based stuff similar to how we see it in Jira releases section. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, uh, so the progress is, um, it's a structure attribute, it's internal attribute. Um, and it, it's based on the different, uh, uh, different things. Uh, so let me actually move to, um, to the power mode. It's, it's probably would be easy. Uh, if you open the column, you can see uh, which attribute is used to to calculate the progress. And um, by default, it's based on the time tracking, which is um, uh, which is original estimate or remaining estimate or, or the time spent. Uh, but you can select uh, the different options, like to build it on the statuses. And in this case, you need to select uh, different statuses for the different. Uh, sorry, different percentage for the different statuses. And it just show you the amount of percentage for this status. So let's say if it's in the progress, it's 50% uh, done, 100%, and you can add the other statuses. But it also includes the sub items into the calculation. So um, if I have uh, epics with these two stories, uh, it would, would gonna include those stories and their progress into the over, pro overall calculation of uh, of a parent. And again, we can decide how do we uh, calculate this children progress and how it affects the parent progress. And uh, it, it, it is all in, in these settings. So it, it's by default, it's uh, equal, but we can change that. And we can, again, depending on what kind of uh, logic you have in your organization, how the, your progress is calculated, uh, we can select the different options over here uh, and, and, and apply it. 
Um, the most of the cases, time tracking um, and the status are, are, are two options that are used for the progress calculation. All right, thank you. Uh, another question here. Um, is there any advantage of speed mode over power mode in terms of functionality? Or is it fair to assume you get the most out of structure with using the power mode? Um, the, the main uh, advantage is uh, ability to you to build your hierarchy quickly and without going uh, in a deep understanding of the generator's logic. Functionally, they are pretty much the same. So you can build uh, same kind of hierarchies in the speed mode, same kind of hierarchies in the, in the power mode. Different approaches would it would take different um, view on how you apply those rules, but functionally they're the same. It's just the from the beginning uh, and for the simple cases like like I show you like stories, uh, epic stories, subtasks, or maybe grouping by sprints. Something really really easy is it's much easier and quicker to build with the speed mode. So it's uh, for the beginning, uh, for the adoption, uh, to see the value, I uh, would probably recommend using speed mode just, just to check that if, if it works for you, uh, if you can uh, build the hierarchy, the view that works for your specific case. Um, and you, you will get the value right away. Uh, because the, the, the one of the problems we, we're seeing is that people struggling to build the view that, that works for them. It's not that there is no way to build it. it, it most of the cases, it is possible. It just it, it takes first understanding all this uh, rules and logic behind all the generators. And we hope that speed mode will, will solve that problem so they could quickly come up with the, with the working view and, and, and try to get the, uh, the value of the, of the structure. Awesome. Thanks for that uh, clarification. Uh, another question. Can you touch base on various views and purpose? I kind of understand it, but it is better to hear from the experts. I'm not sure which views are uh, meant here, uh, but the views uh, from from the structure perspective is the set of columns. So we call it a set of columns as a view, and it's just the definition of the column. So different columns can be saved by the different names, and I, I can just uh, jump between those and uh, use the different visualization of the different information uh, which highlights the, uh, the the problem I'm solving. So each structure in, in this case would have different set of columns because those different purposes, uh, different ideas. Uh, and from, from my experience, it, it's easy to have uh, individual view for, for individual structures uh, or one structure uh, with multiple view that highlights the different subsection of the information um, and yeah you, you can you can save it uh, in any amount of those view uh, as you want you can share it um, so you can apply different uh, permission settings on the view so someone can see it someone not can see it uh, and you can share them on your people you can share them on your team uh, and, and, and give the ability to see the particular information you want for this particular structure awesome uh, here's another one. Um, is it possible to use a structure in plan advanced roadmap? Um, yes, it, it is possible. It is possible to plan uh, in advanced roadmap and then use uh, that plans uh, in the structure. So I, I showed you that um, structure supports this uh, advanced roadmaps connection that advanced roadmaps creates between initiatives and epics. Um, so we've seen a lot when uh, companies plan uh, the higher level item in the advanced roadmaps and then execution level happens on the structure. Absolutely working situation. Uh, but you can also uh, do the same with the GAN. So GAN provides the, the kind of similar view. Uh, so you can put all your planning in the GAN uh, and uh, work directly from here, the updated information directly from here. Both both options are possible. We've seen customer work work with both options. We've actually seen the customer works with this option together. They plan really high level site and advanced roadmaps, then go into the structure again and work on the execution level within the structure again. Great. Um, here's a fun question. What feature are you surprised people don't know about? <laughs> I love the new time in progress field, for example. 
we have a lot of things that are probably not familiar to to our users yet because recently uh had a lot of new stuff and uh it sometimes uh uh slips from the cracks and uh customers don't see it and when we talk to them they say oh we have this feature for like two months they oh haven't seen that um for example uh we uh we have this formula and new formula uh columns which which adds new features and i already mentioned they're gonna do a webinar for that and that new formula features also contains the pre pre-built formula uh, columns. So there's a uh, calculated columns over here. And these are actually formulas that just been saved as the columns. Uh, and let's say I have a last column and I can see through this formula what the last column is. And I don't have any comments on uh, on the epic level. But anyway, if I had, I would see that. And the other things. So uh, we suggest sometimes go through those columns and see what th those brings and sometimes there are really really interesting thing that saved as the column in the structure that uh our customers just don't know about it because like well there's a lot of stuff and you cannot uh see all of that um okay here's one i don't think we got to this one yet of how does the new notes field mentioned in your first slide work um, the notes is just a column. Uh, it's the text column. Uh, I don't have it yet because it, it, it's not been released yet. Um, and you can just double click on it and type your data here, like some uh, notes, information, team team names, uh, team capacity, anything that, that works for you. And it's been saved as the column, as the text column over here in, in the structure. Eventually, we'll add ability to, to use that information in, in the column with the formulas. We already have that ability uh, on the server, and you'll be able to filter by that information. You'll be able to group by that information so that huge increase uh, the flexibility of how you can slice and dice your data in, in structure. Perfect. Uh, all right, we are winding down here. Got a couple more questions that we can try to get answered. Um, is it possible to show the aggregated count of JIRA items at each hierarchy level? So we know how many there are in each section. Um, yes. Uh, so we have this predefined uh, column called um, count lists or count sub items. There are two options. Okay, I'm going to add it again. Count leaves. Um, count sub items. Uh, it's slightly different how it approaches the uh, uh, the calculation. Should it include the parent itself or just the sub items only? Um, but yeah, let's let's show how many items you have down below. And if you want something more complex, some uh, more particular uh, calculation of the sub items, we have formula. We have some option, and we can create the formula that. Uh, would sum on this specific item based on a specific condition. But I, I would recommend starting from, uh, from the count uh, items. Perfect. Thank you so much, Alex. Um, all right, we are almost at the hour, so I think um, we will have to end the webinar now. So thank you, uh, Alex, for your masterful knowledge. Thank you, uh, of course, all of you for your attendance. We hope to see you again soon. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye.